Hello and welcome to another episode of The Average EV. Today, I have a good one for you. My brother and I, we took a road trip all the way from Denver, Colorado to uh, Maryland to surprise my mom for her birthday. Let's get into it. All right, everybody, so this is uh, future Tyler. As you can tell, my hair is a little bit shorter uh, than what you're gonna see in the video. So I flew from BWI to Denver, and then my brother and I took his brand new Tesla Model 3 long range, the refresh, um, back to Maryland so we could surprise my mom for her birthday. She was super surprised. We had a really nice dinner. It was awesome and it was totally worth it. Also got to hang out with my brother for an extended period of time, which we don't really get to do a lot since he lives all the way uh, in Colorado. And on top of that, we got to experience his awesome new car. If you haven't already, go check out my review of the uh, Tesla Model 3 Refresh. Uh, it's, it's an incredible car. And whether you get um, the uh, rear wheel drive or the uh, dual motor long range edition, they're both awesome cars and totally worth it. And um, you know, a lot of people say I don't always recommend Tesla. I mean, I don't not, but um, obviously I like, I tend to stay away because I try to um, cover other cars for my channel, but it's undeniable. Tesla vehicles are great, especially for the value. So um, I think this road trip is a great example of why if you just want an easy experience, just go for Tesla. Obviously, I think all the CCS cars, especially as they gain access to the supercharger network and as the um, CCS charging infrastructure improves. Um, I think that any car is gonna be great, but especially right now, if you're looking for a car, Tesla is undeniably the way to go. Before we get into the video, I just have a couple caveats just for you all, and maybe so you can enjoy this, uh, this uh, video a little bit better. Um, I decided to not split it into two videos, but what I would recommend to you all, um, if, if you so choose, I'd watch the, the road trip part and then take a break, maybe come back a day later, and then you can check out kind of our recap. Um, I didn't want to put them in two separate videos because I, I don't know, I just thought it was silly. Um, and honestly, whenever I watch a YouTube video, like I if, if I'm busy, I'll just pause it and I'll come back to it later that day or an, another day altogether. Um, so uh, hopefully that'll help you all. I'm gonna have this uh, put into chapters so it's easier uh, to navigate as far as the road trip portion and the um, kind of recap portion, which I think has some interesting um, perspectives that we kind of gleaned from this road trip. So enough of me yapping, time for you all to jump straight into when my brother picked me up at the Denver International Airport. All right, everybody, I have made it to Denver and we're on our way back to Maryland, our 1600 mile road trip. Uh, we are in the, the Tesla Model 3, not Model S, refresh long range um, and it has full self-driving beta or supervised is what Elon's calling it now uh, regardless it's gonna make the trip super easy uh, and make it really uh, painless to drive so our first charging stop is gonna be in Lyman and then I can show everybody kind of the plan um, we were gonna go further on the first stop but uh, there were some technical difficulties ahead of uh, picking me up so we weren't up to 100 percent, but it's all it's all good uh the 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 trip planner says we'll get there around the same time that i was estimating so uh, i think it's gonna be all right so we're gonna get on the road and i'll catch up with you all later so here we are 87 miles 24 kilowatt hours and 275 watt hours per mile average energy so a nice little uh uh session there uh, we're charging here uh 148 kilowatts 152 ramping up uh, again, we were at higher state of charge than I'd like to be, so we're going to try to get to the next charger at a much lower state of charge. Uh, and yeah, so I'm going to step out, show you around, and uh, figure out what our plan is. All right, everybody, we're here at the Lyman. Is this Colorado? Lyman, Colorado. I clearly don't come here very often. Uh, this is a unique site, and you want to pay attention when you come here because here you can see we've got the version two superchargers. And then over here, we've got the version three, which we're charging on. And so, yeah, if you come here, make sure you come to, to this side, uh, especially if your car can take advantage of the speeds, or maybe one day you're a, uh, you know, a CCS car and you uh, 
have access to the supercharger network, you can use these. So we're gonna charge up. We only need about 15 to 20 more percent. And then we're gonna head off to, uh, I believe, Oakley, Kansas. All right, we charge up to 72%. Now we're heading to Oakley, Kansas. It says we'll arrive with 12% state of charge. So that would be a little bit better. Sorry, I forgot to record a video, so I'm recording as we're leaving. So um, we're gonna head out and then we'll catch you at the next charger. All right, we're gonna do a review here of the uh, the auto high beams. Let's see how, see how they're doing. So they're, they're on right now because no one's in front of us, which is good. Uh, but here we got some, oh, it turned off and it stayed off. So that was good. But uh, the reason we bring this up is because uh, it's been flashing people. And then we get it, people are flashing us back on the other side. Uh, so that's kind of interesting. So it's just kind of random. So I would say it's not the greatest auto high beam in the world. All right, everybody, we got here with 6% left. Let's see what we get. 140, 174, 207, 235, and 256. Awesome, so uh, 250, all right, cool. So max charge speed, so that is great. Um, let's go uh, take a look here at the um, trip. So we had, um, 167 miles, 49 kilowatt hours, and 294 watt hour per mile. Uh, and here we have the total trip, 253, 73 kilowatt hours, 287 watt hours per mile. So, so far so good. Let's kind of figure out what's going on next. Um, this is what we've been doing. We're just navigating here and we see what it says and then we see if we like what it says. Um, so next, Abilene. Abilene and I've just been going to check and see yep it's 250 so we'll go there that's fine so then end trip and then I go Abilene or actually let me let me do it this way like this yep and it keeps rotating the screen which is annoying a little bit so that's if we do that that's 200 miles and we have to charge up a pretty good charge session. What's hay? Is Hayes? That's a 150, we don't want that. But Russell is a 250. So what would that be? 109 miles. We wouldn't have to charge as long. I think maybe we'll plan for that. And then um, I think we're gonna go use the restroom. If we come back and we have enough to get to um, Abilene, then we'll go to Abilene. But if we have enough for Russell, then we'll just go to Russell. All right, everybody, we are here in Oakley, Kansas. This is a Tesla supercharger located at a uh, Sonic. I don't know if you can see that in the background. So it would be nice during the day with a little playground, Sonic. And then here we got a little gas station. So we're gonna run over there and then we're uh, gonna get back on our way. Okay, so uh, like I said before, we're going to go to the Russell, Kansas supercharger. We're going to get to 10% that we're going to pull. That's the most I could convince my brother to let us uh, do. He won't He won't let us be any lower than that. Uh, I'll, I'll keep trying to convince him during the, the road trip, uh, but we'll, we'll see. All right, we're, we're unplugging. We're unplugging. There you go. Put it away and... Off we go. Let's see. We charged up to 56%. And it says we'll get there with 12. We'll see about that. No heat, no air. No heat, yeah. <laughs> we're we're, we're, we're going to be comfortable. No worries. We're back on the road. Um, I forgot to tell you all, we, um, we lost uh, full self-driving. They, they said the cameras were dirty. And then something happened. And then it... I don't know. It disengaged and then it uh, gave us a strike. But we're back. Uh, Four more to go. And we're, we've are we been paying attention, so out of, we don't know. It was like one of those weird ones that should have counted, but whatever. Here we are, full self-driving, on our way to Russell, Kansas. 
All right, we've made it to Russell, Kansas. Let's turn around, see those trip numbers, see what charge speeds we're getting. All right, we got here with 7% state of charge. This predicted at 10 or 11. So there's that. And 250 kilowatts, there it is. Looking good. And then let's go to trips. Uh, the last drive, we had 110 miles, 36 kilowatt hours used, 329 watt hour per, per mile. There we go. And here's our full trip so far, 363 miles, 109 kilowatt hours, 300 watt hours per mile. So we're, we're working our way. Uh, let's see what our plan is next. All right, everybody, I'm out here to unplug, and look at this. This is like, there's nothing. It's a closed Sonic. So during the day, you know, it's fine. There's Sonic, I guess. There's a subway across the street. Looks like a gas station over 66. So we could walk there if we wanted to, but you know, nothing immediately nearby in the evening, but oh well. So yeah, we're here in, I believe, Russell, Kansas. Uh, we're about to unplug. We charged up to 11, 12%, might be 13 by the time I get in the car, but we're gonna get on our way off to, I believe, Abilene. All right, we charged up the 44%, now on the road. Full self-driving update. We were, uh, I should have had that video running, I did it. It was a merge onto the highway and it like, it came flying at the end of the ramp. And um, before uh, really getting a bearing onto what cars were on the highway, it, it flung us halfway over the dotted white line, brought us back over, and then took us back on the highway. So that was super dangerous and really bad. So that was not good. And this is version 12, right? This is version 12, so yikes, yikes of Rooney and cheese. All right, everybody it says we're gonna arrive with 5%, which is great, but there's a little bit of a story to that. So when we left, it said we had 14%. We're gonna have 14% when we arrived. And then as we were driving, um, it went down way way a lot to like it was it was we got all the way down to one percent and we've been driving the same speeds we've been doing every leg um i've been watching the wind we've pretty much had the same crosswind the whole way so i'm not sure exactly why it was so wrong so we just slowed down a little bit and got to like three or four percent and then we went back to the speeds we, we were uh going and now it's saying five percent which is good so i don't yeah, I, I don't know why it dropped so much because uh, we had intentionally built in enough of a buffer where we would arrive with 5%. So, whatever, we figured it out. But definitely some little quirks here with the route planner. And I've been hearing about this from some other people where it hasn't been quite as accurate as um, it has been in the past. So, hopefully, there's some updates that tweak that a little bit to make it a little bit more uh, consistent and accurate. But so far, we're doing all right. And we're gonna arrive and get nice full charging speeds here in Abilene, Kansas. We have made it to Abilene, Kansas. 4% state of charge. We're plugging in, we'll see what we get going on here. Zero, eight, 32, 70. Ramping up, ramping. Likely get our top speed. There it is. All right, 251. Let's go ahead and take a look at the trip. So for that trip, 91 miles, so not too far. 30 kilowatt hours, 325 watt hours per mile. Uh, so far, 454 miles, 138 kilowatt hour, 305 watt hours per mile. So we're uh, we're moving along. We got we're about I think this is about a quarter way through the trip. All right, we're, we're charging up here, everybody. Um, the lighting's really great at this site, which is actually nice. Uh, but again, we're we're late in the evening, which I guess not a lot of people travel that late in the evening. And there's really not much nearby for us to use. There's this grocery store during the day, which would be nice. But, you know, yeah, it's just not a lot to use. So uh, I'd say so far the trip's going well. We got this, the uh, Model 3 refresh. Looking good. I, I do like the new front. I'll do a whole review of the car, um, but that's going well. 
with that car. And of course, uh, I haven't, I don't know if I've talked about this yet, but the free supercharging. I'm not a big fan of free charging. My brother <laughs> loves it because he's he hasn't paid for charging a day in his life. Uh, but uh, it, it's super nice to drive uh, 1600 miles on Mr. Musk's uh, tab. So thanks, Elon. We're enjoying it. And uh, we're gonna let it charge up and then uh, get going. All right, everybody. So we're gonna we're gonna go to Lawrence, two hours, 120 miles. So we'll charge up here probably to I don't know 55, 60 percent, and then get on our way. And hopefully there's some coffee nearby in Lawrence. Everyone, there's everyone. There's been a change of plans. We're gonna go to the earlier Topeka now because they there's a Starbucks and there's food. Now it yeah. is a version two supercharger but we want to stop and get some food so it's okay if it takes a little bit longer. It's not the end of the world. So that's uh, how we're gonna roll. Um, yeah, it's over here. So this one's the 250, this is the 150, but we want to get some food. We won't have to feel rushed. So that's what we're gonna do. And um, there it is, it's also available. So we can leave, I'm gonna go and plug. Let's get on it. All right, everybody, we're here in Topeka. 17%, um, we're just gonna plug in and um, see how it goes. You were gonna go get food, so if we take more time, you know, whatever. So that was 82 miles, 26 kilowatt hours, 316 watt hours per mile. Uh, we're gonna plug in, we'll see what speeds we should get. Should be about 150 kilowatts. All right, we're plugged in, ramping up, should get 150, and then we're gonna go pop over to Starbucks, Panera, there it is, 150. All right, we'll catch up with y'all in a little bit. All right, everybody, here's the plan. We can unplug now, but we're gonna be going to Independence, Missouri, 94 miles. Um, that's upside down. No, it's not, that's right. Um, yep, so there it is. I don't know why we're gonna go. I guess that's faster to not go through Kansas City. Um, but there it is, charge up there. 250 kilowatts, so that'll be good experience. And it's 94 miles away, so another hour and a half. We're really, we're really enjoying these hour and a half charges instead of, uh, sorry, hour and a half drives instead of driving for three hours. It's nice to get out, walk around. So we stopped at Starbucks, and then we realized the Panera is a little bit further away. So I'm gonna put an order ahead and then go pick it up. So uh, I'm gonna put that in, and then we're gonna get on the road to Panera, and then get on our way to Independence, Missouri. All right, we're unplugging here. Ooh. Handles warm. Gonna get on our way uh, and continue to have a really, really great trip. Uh, so far, it has been an awesome experience as far as charging is concerned. Um, and, you know, no traffic, but now we're turning into daytime and we're gonna start to hit traffic. But it is Saturday, so hopefully it won't be um, too bad. All right, here we are, V3. Plugged in. I do love it, you can just plug it in and know it's gonna work every time, or almost every time. All right, 26%, we're getting 152, 171, 186. So around 200 kilowatts at 26%. All right, not bad. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead, let it charge. I'm gonna shoot a charging site reviews video and then I'll come back and kind of figure out the plan. All right, everybody, so uh, we're charging up. Gonna go back to the car in a second, but I had to point these out. Uh, these are the um, the universal connector, wall connectors. Uh, so you just unplug, you press the button, pull out, and then you got your J1772. So good for uh, CCS or uh, Tesla vehicles, or I guess um, NACS uh, J3400 vehicles. So awesome uh, little perk here from Tesla. All right, everybody, we've got our plan here. Uh, we're going, I actually forgot already. Let me let me zoom out. We're going to Columbia, Missouri uh, to a 250 kilowatt um, version three supercharger right off the highway, 115 miles. We have more than enough charge and we're gonna get going. We're actually gonna stop somewhere to go to the bathroom because this site, I don't know if I said it earlier, but it's, it's, it's not great because there's there's no food and there's no bathrooms so the two things you really need in a charging site and this one doesn't have it so 
Ugh. All right, everybody. This is the first time we've been able to shoot a video in the, the daylight. Um, but we've been going since like eight o'clock yesterday, uh, mountain time. And, um, uh, things have been going relatively well. Charging has been going great. FSD has not been going the best. Uh, and I think what I noticed, cause I, I drove a nighttime leg and a daytime leg. And I think that the FSD performs a lot better during the day because of the interior camera that tracks the driver. Um, cause the nags were a lot less during the day and it was actually much more enjoyable at nighttime. It was, it was almost unbearable to use. Um, like I wanted to turn it off. And so, um, yes, but it's definitely, uh, supervised. It's like you're supervising like a teenage driver. That's not quite sure how to drive. Sometimes supervised to supervise. Yeah. Well, <laughs> you, you know, I'm, <laughs> I'm learning, I'm learning the, the FSD. Uh, cause the, um, when you drive with FSD, you, it will, it will nag you to make sure you're still there. And what you do is you have to add like a little torque to the wheel. And I was struggling getting that concept down, but I think I've mastered it now. Uh, but yeah, so scroll wheel is the way to go. You can also use the scroll wheel, but then that changes the, um, the speed. So, but anyways, yeah, th that's our little check-in. Now we're on our way 110 miles and uh we're gonna charge up again like we're gonna do several times until we till we get there <laughs> all right everybody 19 percent state of charge we're plugging in again we we, we overcharge it's okay we are trying to maximize but it's not the biggest deal 115 miles 33 kilowatt hours 285 watt hours per mile you just plugged in and then oh. <laughs> And then 746 miles, 223 kilowatt hours, 29, uh, two, 299 watt hours per mile for the whole trip. Not too bad. And we're pulling 170, 80, 93, 212, 223. And that's what we're gonna get. All right. All right, everybody, ignore me over the loud uh, air. We're way overcharged. We kinda, we went over there and explored this QT's gas station, which is super cool. A lot of options, very busy though. And then we're talking to these owners over here, they're super nice. But anyways, now we need to figure out what we're gonna do. So I'm gonna go ahead and figure it out and then come back to you all. All right, so we, we already headed out. I forgot to update you all. So we're going to go to St. Charles Supercharger in, um, uh, uh, what is it, Kansas, not Kansas City, uh, St. Louis, oh my gosh, St. Louis, Missouri. Um, it's a 150 kilowatt charger. There we go. I, I don't know what I was clicking. There we go. And Saint, Saint, just outside of St. Louis, I guess St. Charles is technically where it is. Um, there it is. But we wanted to stop and get lunch, so we don't care that's 150. And then we have way too much battery, so we'll probably end up with even more way too much battery. And then we can try and uh, see how far we can go up 70. <laughs> All right, everybody, we arrived here with 41% state of charge. Uh, now we're at a level two and all the cells are full. So we're going to be splitting power here, um, which is actually fine. Cause I think we're going to go into Smashburg, uh, Smashburger and eat or maybe somewhere else. Uh, we'll look around. Um, but let's go ahead and look at our trip data, 99 miles, 27 kilowatt hours. And there it goes again. And 274 watt hour per mile. So pretty efficient. We are going slower speed, some traffic and our total for the trip, 845 miles, 250 kilowatt hours and 296 watt hours per mile. So bringing that average down. All right, everybody. We're gonna go 189 miles to this supercharger in uh, Indiana, Terra Halta. I probably butchered it, so make fun of me in the comments. Um, again, it's trying to trying to cool down the cabin, so it's super loud. Hope you can hear me. Um, we're gonna go ahead, get on the road. All right, everybody, we actually arrived at seven. I forgot to film. Uh, we're at 250 kilowatt, uh, which is great. Let's go to trips. That last leg was 190, big leg, 52 kilowatts, 274 watt hours per mile. Trip, 1,035 miles, 300 kilowatt hours, 292 watt hours per mile. We just got 600 more miles to go uh, to at least get back to my car. So uh, here we are. Uh, it's been a fun trip so far. Gonna go check out the Meyer. Lots of cool stuff around here. Uh, a pretty decent charging site, I'd say. All right, everybody, we're, we're, 
We're unplugging. Uh, we we have 78 percent. We have enough to get to Dayton, Ohio, but it, it's a it's a 150, but it has good food options. So we're gonna go good food options, so we can eat eat a, eat a nice dinner instead of um, better charging speeds and have to like uh, suffer with um, fast food. So that's what we're gonna do. All right, everybody, we've made it here with 17 percent state of charge. Let's go ahead and check out the tripometer. Here we go, 176 miles, 45 kilowatt hours, 257 watt hours per mile. We're just getting more and more efficient as this trip goes on. Here's our full trip, 1,210 miles, 347 kilowatt hours and 287 watt hours per mile. Okay, we're here at a version two supercharger. Uh, we chose this one because we want to eat, have a little bit more extra time. So it was very intentional. We could have went to a 250, but we didn't because there was no good food options. So now we're going to go eat and then we'll be back. Uh, when we're ready to go. Um, obviously not optimizing here, but we're just hungry and tired and we need to kind of take a little bit of a break. All right, everybody, uh, grab some Chipotle and back here, uh, waiting for my brother because uh, he went somewhere else. He went to, there it is, Huey Magoo's. Never heard of it, but you got some chicken tenders. We're gonna see how those are. Uh, and it looks like we're power sharing 4B4A. I think that all the chargers when they came were in use, so that's why they parked, so it's not a big deal. And we're not really in that big of a hurry. So we're just gonna, so we're just gonna eat and then get on our way and then uh, basically uh, kind of be as efficient as we can for the rest of the trip since we're being a little leisurely here. Also, I'm not sure if I said this, but uh, this is at, in Dayton, Ohio, is this charger that we're currently at, uh, version two. Uh, and it's a really great spot. There's a Meyer and all these other restaurants, so a really great option. All right, we're all charged up here at the Dayton, Ohio uh, version two. I don't know, I'm struggling with that today. Version two supercharger, 88%, so a little bit higher than we wanted to, but we were eating and um, talking, and then by the time we were done, we're like, oh, we should probably go. Oh, it's 88. Uh, so anyways, we're on our way, and uh, we're going all the way to West Virginia. And then after that, we should have one stop and then on to uh, BWI where I'm gonna pick up my car. All right, we made it here with 17%. There we go, ramp it up. Might get around 200, we'll see. Nothing too crazy here. Oh, 215, 230. Right, yeah, there we are. And then check the trips out. That last stretch was 207 miles, 52 kilowatt hours. Energy used 253 watt hours per mile, nice and efficient. And so far for the trip, 1,418 miles, 400 kilowatt hours, 282 watt hours per mile. All right, so we're gonna uh, plug in, well, we already are plugged in. Um, we're gonna charge up enough to get to what should be our final uh, charging stop before we get to BWI where I pick up my car. All right, everybody, so yeah, we're here in West Virginia at a Sheets, always a great charging location. Nice version threes, looks like we got eight of them. Nice uh, trailer spot there if you'd want it, but yeah, good stop, grab some drinks. We're gonna charge up here, a decent amount. Then we're gonna go to Cumberland, Maryland charge up and then head down to BWI. All right, everybody, we're unplugging and getting on our way. Step inside and see what we got going on percentage wise. Whew. All right, 65%. There it is. It says we'll arrive with 25%. So. Definitely here a little bit longer than we needed to be, but I had to go and use the restroom. So off we go to Cumberland, Maryland, our final charging stop. All right, everybody, we made it to our last charge stop here in Cumberland, Maryland, 10% state of charge. Uh, we're plugging in. Let's see what charge speeds we get. We're ramping up here, or maybe we are. There we go. Should get uh, near full charge speeds. It's actually a, a kind of cool spot. It's a sheets. Yeah, 
Yeah, there we go. Near full charge speeds or full charge speed. Perfect. Yeah, near full. And then um, trips, 140, 147, I can read. Miles, 40 kilowatt hours, 272 watt hours per mile. It was all downhill. 1,565 miles traveled. 439 kilowatt hours, 281 watt hours per mile for the full trip. So, so far, so good. Let's wrap this bad boy up. All right, everybody, here's this sheet. It's kind of cool, it's like set into the hill. It's angled and it's it's really weird because it's, it's just four version three posts, but you know, it's probably perfect for out here in Cumberland. So yeah, nice spot, always love sheets. All right, everybody, we have charged up to 58%. That gives us a bunch of wiggle room and some charge. So once we get there, we can get to where we need to go after uh, we kind of complete this trek and we pick up my car. So going to go ahead, get in the car and get on our way to the uh, BWI Daily Parking Garage. All right, everybody. So when we got to the airport, we totally forgot to record a end of trip video, but I did snag a picture of the data. So 1,705 miles, 477 kilowatt hours of energy used and 280 watt hours per mile, so not too bad. And then it took us almost 29 hours. I, I believe it was about uh, 28 hours and 45 or 48 minutes. So not too bad for the trip all the way from Colorado, we were at the Denver International Airport going to Baltimore, Washington International Airport. All right, everybody, we're here, the, uh, well, not the next day, it's the same day as the end of the road trip, but we, we went, went home, uh, went to sleep, and then um, now we're all clean and stuff like that. So we're ready to, to kind of talk about the end. So first we're gonna talk about FSD and then our general impressions of the road trip, and then we'll wrap up the video. So. For FSD, it was both of our first experience really using it. Um, we've never used any other version of FSD, uh, but for this, I believe it's 12.3.4, yeah, 12, uh, version 12.3.4, so it's the latest one as of today, April 13th, 14th, whatever day it is. Um, so I'll do my impressions, you, you'll do your impressions, and then we'll, so like it, um, and the majority of our driving was on highway. We didn't do city, so we can't speak to city. Um, he actually tested it out in Denver. Yeah, I enjoyed it in and, Denver. And, and he thought the city driving was good and he enjoyed it. And I guess I would ask, did it feel natural? Really? Yes, okay. actually, yeah. I've had a loaner, I've done the loaner autopilots, but okay. not full self-driving. So even comparing it to stopping and the taking off is a lot more natural for cool. sure. So, so there's that. So. Um, the rest of our impressions are just on the highway because that's what we were for 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 28 hours. So um, in general, I think there's a lot of for me. There's a lot of work to do when you call something full self driving, supervised, supervised. But if full self driving's in it, then it should be doing the majority of the work. Um, and there was just a lot of scenarios where I thought that it caused confusion to other drivers where. Um, and it would be because maybe it didn't pick up a speed a speed limit sign and then it like um, wouldn't adjust or maybe it would pick up the wrong speed limit sign and then it would harshly adjust. Like if, if the speed limit is 70 and then it picks up the 45 minimum and then it slows you down to 45. Like that's just not okay. Um, another thing I talked about a little bit earlier, but if a car comes in front, we had several different scenarios with several different results. It was never the same every single time a car would come in front and sometimes it would s s harshly slam on the brakes. And then sometimes it would come in front of us and be perfectly fine and do it really naturally and make a lot of sense. Um, I had a lot of issues on uh, exit and on ramps. I felt like, well actually on ramps were generally okay. Um, Cause you obviously you want to get the speed on an on ramp, but for an exit ramp, I felt like sometimes it was way too fast. And there's actually one time it almost went off of the ramp. Um, Cause it was going a little bit, it was a little, a little too fast. Um, so that was another issue I had. Um, as far as when it was working well, it was great. Um, uh, at nighttime, we noticed there were more nags than during daytime. But I will say the second leg at nighttime was better. Yes, yeah, for so, some reason. We had cleaned the 
exterior cameras. <laughs> so maybe, maybe something with that. <laughs> yeah, we're not too sure. We uh, did, did get a lot of notices that the cameras were obstructed. Yes, uh, that happened the, all the time, and they were. And it was changing. Pillar camera would be obstructed. Uh, yeah, and all of them. Went to, and we yeah. checked. We checked all the cameras and cleaned them, and so we're not sure. And it never really limited the ability that we could tell. No, of FSD. It, it turned it off. It, it still kept going. Yeah, it's it it, just it would bing like every five ten minutes, yeah. very loudly that you couldn't see. Um, here, I'll wrap up my little spot here. Now, for me, this is my opinion about it. So to keep it in um, the full self-driving engaged, you have to like add a little bit of torque to the steering wheel. When I first started, I was really struggling with adding <laughs> torque where I would I would like pull it too hard and then it would just like disengage and then the car would slow down and pull into the other lane. So that was my fault. Or not at all. <laughs> yeah, or I didn't do it enough and then it would give me a ding and like say, you know, you're not gonna be able to use full self-driving. So uh, whatever, uh, but anyways, um, <clears throat> So I finally got that mastered, but I don't love that interface. And to me, over like a long drive, it kind of gets annoying to have to keep like just wiggling the steering wheel like that. I wish there was another way. I know that, um, I know there's reasons as to why they don't have the capacitive steering wheel, um, but I just wonder if there's some other sort of solution. Like I know that Ford um, Blue Cruise and Chevy Super Cruise are completely hands-free as long as you're looking forward. So I wonder if there was some way that Tesla could make it that experience. I don't, I guess that's because those are pre-mapped roads. And I don't know, if, I know Tesla is all about the, well, you can do this anywhere. You don't need to be on a pre-mapped road. So, uh, I, I don't know. Um, oh, I did have one more thing. I had one weird situation where I got a ding for uh, the full self-driving where uh, it was a lane that was about to end and FSD was not getting over. It wasn't even attempting to get over. It didn't have the turn signal on and there were cars. So it wasn't communicating to cars that it needed to get over and it was about to run out of a lane. And so I had to intervene and when I intervened, I obviously accelerated so I could get around the car um, that was to our right. And then um, because of that, I was going over the speed limit for, uh, for auto steer and then it, it gave me a strike. Uh, which was a little annoying because I was intervening for safety because of... And I, I would just throw in there, I think it uh, gave you a strike for missing uh, acknowledging. Okay. I think that's why it gave you a strike. Okay. Um, because you can go over faster yeah. than the speed and press the pedal. Um, but as you were worried about what it was going to do, you weren't noticing yeah. uh, that you needed to tell it you were paying attention. Yeah. Because you hadn't taken over yet. So, so yeah. that I think that the timing was just yeah that. yeah maybe yeah maybe because maybe, maybe my hands were just on the steering wheel I didn't add any torque correct and I just added speed so that's correct yes that, that, adding speed does not acknowledge yeah so yeah. so that's that was a, a good learning curve for me and it, it didn't happen again and there was one other scenario where I, sorry it just it just popped into my head we were driving and there was an accident and it was a three lane but um, they had shut down two lanes. But the, um, there were cars in, in the center and right lane and, and none in the left. But they're the people who like to fly down the left so they can get ahead of, ahead of everybody else. I don't think that FSD handled that scenario very well. Because um, it, it, I, being me, because I'm a courteous, and well, I'm going to get over as soon as possible. So, you know, and then we'll, we'll all eventually get past the accident. And so I got over and I put the, the turn signal on to move FSD over. And FSD's like, no, and I'm going to go back over. I want to go around all these cars. And so maybe I guess a little bit of better situational awareness when things happen um, could definitely make it a little bit, a little bit better experience um, for not only me but for all drivers on the road. Um, and I I do wonder because I had it on assertive. Yep. I wonder if I didn't have it on assertive if it would have handled it I, in a, a different I way. Th I think so. Assert I I like the fact that it has assertive and it is assertive because you need to be assertive in certain situations. Yeah. Um, and the minimal lane change is nice. Yeah. The two the two most critical things I feel are uh, on the highway driving, uh, having a previous Model S with two hundred thousand two hundred twenty five thousand miles and only one set of brake pads at two hundred thousand. Yeah, hitting the brakes at 85 and not tapping the brakes the thing it hits the brakes at 85 miles an hour and you smell brake dust and everything like the IDs aren't lasting 200 miles if you FSD all the time I'll tell you that but uh, that was the most critical and the second most very critical thing is the speed limit for me if the thing's not going to tell you 
the correct speed limit, I'm not going to rely on it. I, I was thinking it was 100%, 100% of the time. And I, I, because it's the speed limit sign, how could it get it wrong? <laughs> but it does. Another great example in my area, it has a uh, speed limit sign that says that is not a speed limit sign, it's a warning that it. 20 if there's not a speed limit sign it's 25 miles an hour well there it goes 25 miles an hour even though it's a 50 mile an hour road so it, there's some quirks that uh the learning uh hopefully will pick up faster for us um yeah those are the two critical things i think need fixed right away for highway driving on fsd no more phantom braking they gotta somehow i appreciate uh it slowing down for the semis but like to hit the brakes just because you're coming up on a semi I don't, yeah. I don't know all the technicalities of why it's doing that. Maybe to get over, to judge how far it needs to get over, but yeah, with that, time, hopefully. And it, the, it sends a mix, mixed messages to drivers around you Correct. when you're just braking so hard. Yeah. And then when you say when it, it, it breaks hard, because it, 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 does, it doesn't feel like a regen. It feels like, no, it's it actual feels like the friction brakes. It's the actual yeah. brakes, yeah, it's yeah, so. regen. So maybe that, that that could just be like a software thing yeah. where it it relies on the the regen first and more. But really. but in general, it was a good experience. But I think um, again, I'm gonna give an unpopular opinion. Um, <laughs> I I, <laughs> uh, I and I actually did just test the auto steer. So personally, I would just use auto steer, and um, I would say now with uh, the autopilot auto steer. Sorry, I keep. Cause they they didn't they change they did change the name right yeah, i'm making correct. that up yeah they did up top there yeah it's called auto steer beta it's an autopilot feature um but it says autopilot yeah but it says so i guess it's autopilot auto steer um oh sorry i almost dropped the camera there um i would just use that i think it's much improved and uh i was gonna say like the id4 travel assist is like just as good in my opinion as the auto steer and i would much rather just use those systems than the full self-driving at all um obviously most people who drive cars like to drive a car. And I f the, for me, the, the FSD kind of takes away the part of driving that I like uh, and having the control and also the ability to make the decisions on your own. Um, I understand that later, who knows, 10, 20, 30 years down the road, maybe we will have more uh, vehicles that are completely uh, driven by computers. Um, but I think that people are gonna wanna have the ability to drive the car on their own. And I just think that FSD isn't quite there yet and it might never be. That's, just, that's my personal opinion. No compute limitations. Yeah, well, we'll see how things go. Well, anyways, uh, let's, we'll talk really, cause this is this is becoming a super long video. Um, but for, for the road trip, it went really well. It was pretty smooth. Uh, every supercharger worked perfectly fine. We had no issues at any super, we didn't have to unplug once. Nope. We plugged in and worked every time. Um, uh, we used two version two superchargers intentionally because we wanted a little bit extra time. Uh, so I think that's a great use of, of version two. If you see a version two and a version three and you're like, you know what, I kinda wanna get food. You know, maybe I'll go to a version two. Like, it's a great idea. Um, I mean, you get, char you get charged per kilowatt hour anyways. It's not like it matters. Uh, so if you need a little bit more time, um, do that. And then you don't have to worry about idle fees or going out and moving your car after it's done charging. Um, and then I, I will say the one thing, cause we drove 70 the whole way. Uh, a lot of the charging sites are not good at night. So like after like 10 PM when everything's closed, like there's no bathrooms, uh, there's nothing to go. They're like, they're, a couple of them were at Sonic's and like that was the only th attraction. <laughs> so like when Sonic's open is good, but when Sonic's closed, like there's, there's nothing. Um, so I definitely think that, um, not just Tesla, any charge point operator really needs to consider amenities. the amenities. And like, that's why I started EV charging set reviews is like, there has to be a bathroom 24 seven. Like if you're traveling with your family, like they need to go to the bathroom. Like, like if I was with my, if th this trip was me, my wife and my son, like where's my wife gonna go to the bathroom? Is she gonna pull up behind like a dumpster? Do you know what I mean? Like what is she gonna do? Um, so I guess we could just go to a gas station later, but if we're stopped, like that's when we should be doing all those things. That's the, the beauty of an EV is that you can do all those things while you, while you fuel your car. You don't have to do it after you fuel your car. But aside from that, I thought it was a great trip. Any it was fun. Yeah. I liked it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, hey everyone. So we just did a quick little um, test 
of like a little city scenario with the FSD and it worked really nicely. Um, no issues and it actually navigated some really uh, challenging things. So I can say that that, uh, at least from my experience of being a first time FSD user went really well. Like I said, highway has a lot of work to be done for sure, but at least that little city driving we had was awesome. All right, everybody, we were, we were driving. We had a couple, two things pop up. So Tom will talk about the merging that he liked. Uh, yes, yeah, I, I like, I really like how uh, the full self-driving uh, does merging onto the highway. It does it very naturally. It uh, builds up speed, gets the right speed, and then hops into the lane of traffic. Uh, one of the things that I'll be definitely reporting back is uh, camping in the left lane. Uh, in Colorado, you know, and most states, I don't think you're supposed to camp in the left lane on a highway. Uh, two-lane highway it's used to pass and actually in Colorado they even have a sign that says you may like to camp but don't camp in the left lane the uh, left lanes for passing only keep right and less passing uh, but the Tesla just hangs in the fast lane and loves staying in the fast lane yeah. that's that's one of the things I think it should fix uh, stay in the right lane and only use the left left lane unless you're gonna pass yeah there's multiple times where it would get over and I would stay in the left lane, and then I'd have to hit the, the right turn signal to get it back over to the right lane. Yeah. All right, everybody, uh, that's it. Hope you all enjoyed this video. Um, please remember to give a like and subscribe. Hit the notification bell. Follow me on X, and also follow EV Charging Site Reviews. Uh, there will be three coming from this trip that I was able to record. So thanks again for watching, and I'll catch you all next time.